and you just you know you, you mentioned attachment styles yeah and um that's something my my 23 year old daughter and i talk about a lot yeah and it's it's running you know people are starting to talk about that a lot yeah. more but if, for people who haven't heard about attachment styles can you want to it's big a little bit it's more really big Okay, so our attachment style, and I'm no expert on it, but yeah. I've lived it. I love it. I love how powerful it is, right? It I, There are people who I follow yeah. who where I've learned a lot of these things. Yeah. And um, quite a bit. And and I it's, to me, really profound. So we are all formed, um, our attachment style, and our nervous system gets mm-hmm. set up by how well our needs were met when we were babies. And some were their needs were met very beautifully they were looked upon like yes your needs are met if you're hungry tired i'm here there's even like a type of voice you can have that has prosody and mm-hmm. and uh, dr stephen porges has studied this the way we talk like a like a preschool teacher and that's very soothing to the nervous system that they feel seen heard and then there's and that can create an, a secure attachment style that's one that's one type mm-hmm. another one could be somebody who is inconsistent a different nervous system is created from that and a different attachment style of like, oh, sometimes things are met, sometimes they're not. That might show up in, later in a relationship like um, needing a lot of reassurance and or, you know, yeah, that kind of shift of like more insecurity, more anxiousness about right. that person. Are they going to come? Are they going to go? Away. Yeah, yes. The, yeah. yeah. And then they go, there's, and, and but by the way, the secure attachment style is, is really a healthier. Yes, I, I ask for my needs to be met. And I, um, I can give love, I can receive love, and it's it's a safer kind of place to be. Right. And then there's this other one that is um, avoidant, and so they go through. There's four main ones, yeah. and I think everyone should go and look at it. And the what you are in one relationship is not necessarily what you are in every relationship, because there are people who can activate, and they you might be activated into anxiousness because somebody really isn't there for you. Like you mm-hmm. might be really aware of somebody who's like a narcissist. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you are an anxious, you know. Right. You are so, responding yeah, to the condition of the relationship you're in. Yes. And yeah. so it's just something for people to look at. And it, there's so much more to it. But but the way that we were formed before, which is not to blame parents. Right. Some were young. Mine was young and, mm-hmm. and, and getting a divorce and didn't want kids in the first place. Like, yeah. you know, luckily, I, I was brought into, my, um, into a home with my grandparents. So... Even though my dad wasn't around and my mom wasn't really ready to be a parent, um, my grandparents stepped in. So I got like a hybrid. And when I'm with somebody really safe, I'm good. Yeah. When I'm with somebody where there's too much, where I feel disempowered, or there, uh, it's you know, there's certain just things that will activate me if I don't. Yeah. My intuition. You grow up really hyper vigilant if yeah. you don't have a really secure attachment style because you lived in. I lived in some danger. So. Yeah. I look for danger and what you seek, you shall find. So, you know, you can overstate that and self-sabotage, which is where our managing our nervous system is really important. Mm -hmm. But anyways, these tools can be taught. There's people who are specialists in it and it's not your fault if you're anxious. It's, and it doesn't mean that, you know, you're a horrible person in a relationship. It means that you might have a little extra learning to do and practice and develop a practice. Yeah. So my practice just got like kind of like, After getting divorced, it was like, wow, in an armchair, I can sit and tell everyone what to do. But in reality, our love relationships, I'm great with my friends. I'm great with work. But in a love relationship, when I finally get really close to someone, it might activate like that fear again, right? Feeling love is like the other flip side of that beauty and that pancake is like loss. And that's in real life. Grandparents, even the safest love that I've ever known, Mm -hmm. well, they get older. You know, my child was plagued with running outside to see if the, if the um, fire truck was going to their house, like, because they were my people, right? So love is not for the faint of heart, right? Right. So you get into a love relationship and all of a sudden, you know, somebody who's been, who had a childhood that was just amazing and perfect. They're like, yeah, everything turns out. Okay. They haven't suffered any big loss or whatever. But somebody who wasn't is like, is this going to stay? Is this permanent? Yeah, you know, and I, I had to come to terms recently that nothing's really that love isn't permanent either. But neither is nature. The trees yeah. aren't right. Yeah, like so. Let's let go of like it needing to be them with you forever. Right. Let's, is it is it good now? Is it good now? Am I good today? So there's tools for all those things. Yeah, and I've had to learn them, and I've had to relearn them, and I'm relearning them on well, different people, right? Oh, different yeah. people teaching yeah. different things. Yeah. And, 
Yeah, I will tell you the, the the healthiest thing for me is somebody who is is got like a calm, oh, calm, gosh, you kind, and I are on the same right? page. Yeah. Calm, kind, <clears throat> um, loving, and then I can be that person too, Absolutely. which is my favorite way to be. I don't want to be go back into like, no. you know. Yeah, it's interesting because I've been thinking about this, having you know spent time with family and. Again, I always say people do the best they can with mm-hmm. what they know, and then it's our responsibility to know more, right? So mm-hmm. we keep learning so that we can be better for ourselves and for our kids. And I, you know, I love my family tremendously, but I realize now that it's your nervous system is like a collective nervous system of what your mm-hmm. family, like I look mm-hmm. at family systems, mm-hmm. which is another really interesting yeah. part of psychology, but like how your family's nervous system was is is what you learn yeah right i mean yeah. in essence and i've been around that lately and then i realized oh my gosh i have a sign in my house that says cultivate calm ah that nice. was like yeah. i had it made from yeah. a friend who that's had this funny. beautiful wooden sign company yeah um after my divorce yeah. because i realized that's how i function the best and right. that was how i wanted my home environment yeah. to be for my kids mm-hmm. but i never realized i didn't really come from that because a lot of things from the outside looking in you know, people say, like, there are big traumas in life. And what I have learned, though, is that we don't need to, we can't compare our traumas, right? Mm-hmm. And even if you're born, like, a highly sensitive person, I You're am, an HSP? Mm-hmm. 15% of us are, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've had conversations with my mom where she's like, you were screaming in your crib. And, I mean, I don't remember this. Mm-hmm. But I have always known, I've noticed, I've always taken in. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, you know, you, you, it takes time to realize yeah. that this is how you're wired. Yeah. And then how to meet those needs. Mm-hmm. And so part of my journey has been trying to create that for myself, which I have, and then create that for my kids. And when you look back and you see the difference mm-hmm. between that environment of this is how they take in the world and it's, it's, almost Mm fear-based and waiting for the shoe to drop and I can't live like that yeah right not funny but not funny but interesting right and yet you still love you I love my family but at the same time it's that yeah it's that evolution of you know if I want to function at my highest potential this is how I need to the choices I need to make to thrive yeah right yeah and people getting the right people around you you won't know that until you get yourself to that space where you're like, oh, this is my sweet spot. Yes. And for me, calm is... Yes. Is so that. when you are around, let's say, your family or some other mm-hmm. person who activates you or something, do you get tired? Do you get feisty? What happens to you? Um, I withdraw. Yeah. That's so... Yeah. My common. kids will yeah. say, mom, like, your personality changes. Like, mm-hmm. you... I have a hard time. Because what I've realized is, like, I won't fight for space. Mm-hmm. And you get in environments where people, everyone mm-hmm. is, and it's a self-worth issue, right? Everyone's trying to, I love to contribute, mm-hmm. but if you're in a situation where you feel like you're fighting for space, mm-hmm. that's something where, I, like, my withdrawal now is more, I'm just going to pull back. Because mm-hmm. you're everybody. managing your energy, too, right? Which is so yeah. huge. Yeah. I get So that. huge. Yeah. And that's, that's really you know, good. I'm mom of four, and mm-hmm. I love what I do. I love helping other people, but sometimes you realize, I mean, you can only... You can only help, like, you have to live yes. what you're helping. You one more pay- person makes that oxygen mask analogy, but oh it is gosh, so true, right? Oh, my God. we got to come up with another one. Like, yeah, I know, be like right? The, bo- the bottle of water, you have to take your first sip. Well, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I'm really, you know, something. I, one of the things I've learned with my, because with my four, my oldest, I feel like, you know, we really, she really went through this, like, parentification. Like, mm-hmm. she was doing stuff too young mm-hmm. that because there were three other ones behind her mm-hmm. and there was just a lot going on. And it's something now that like we work through together, mm-hmm. but you realize what I was thinking this morning was you have to teach them to take care of themselves yeah. before they can take care of others. Yes. And it's the same goes for us. I used right? to say to my kids in the car, um, you guys, it's like I start out the day with a glass of orange juice. And when you guys are fighting in the car in the morning, you're sipping a bunch of my juice. And if you, if I pick you up from school and you're fighting again, there goes more juice. 
So if you think we're going to CPK tonight out to dinner and mom's juice is gone, <laughs> yeah. we're having some breakfast happening. for dinner again. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Sometimes happening. I would make, I would make, so guess what we're having? We're having breakfast for dinner. And my son, who's older and so sweet, like, yay. And my daughter would be like, you forgot to go to the store again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so Perspective. She, and then so like, yeah, that's the other thing with your kids is they'll call you out on stuff. And so mm-hmm. you're really like, when you have kids, you're, you're also, see for me, I had, forgiven everything from my past but then I had kids and I looked at them and I thought oh when I was my daughter's age I wasn't loved and cared for like this and then new perspective brought new pain a lot of new pain yeah. and so my poor mom got like blindsided by new anger and pain and resentment yeah. and I, was, I, I didn't talk about it and whatever like, it's hard so those, it those are the hardest that, right? relationships to, yeah. to say what yeah. we need to say yeah. right yeah and then we worked through that batch and then and then she did some new stuff. I mean, one customer was like, get over it. I'm like, oh no, it's the new stuff. Like, mm-hmm. you know, but I, it's all like, I don't want to hold on to any of it really. No. You know, but you know, they also, you know, we're all, we're all growing and, and learning and doing the best we can. And, you know. Yeah. There's something that's hitting me that I've been thinking about lately. Maybe you have a perspective on this, but like people say that life is hard and we're sitting here talking about, you know, challenges. Mm-hmm. And I do think life brings you challenges as an as a way that we can grow through them mm-hmm. right and then help other people as we evolve but there's also life is hard because we're making choices mm-hmm. that make life harder mm-hmm. and that can be really frustrating to see right mm-hmm. i mean when you have a client they're coming to you wanting to evolve mm-hmm. but there can be people in our lives that you're like wow you're just making choices and it, and you're saying life is hard yeah but do you have a distinction on like how to deal with people that you're, when you observe, you're going, you're making this hard on yourself. And then it makes it hard on other people too.